In this video, we're going to complete example two. It says that Anne makes regular repayments of $2,450 into her investment account at the end of every quarter and never withdraws any money from the account. So for now, I just want to write D because that's a repayment. It then says that her account accrues interest at a rate of 3.2% per annum compounded quarterly. We need to have a look at that because our interest rate needs to change. It's 3.2% per annum, but we've got to make it a quarterly interest rate. There are four quarters in a year, so we're going to take our 3.2% and we're going to divide it by four. 3.2 divide 4 equals 0 0.8. So we find out that the interest rate is 0.8% per quarter rather than 3.2% per, per year or per annum. We also need to convert it to a decimal. To do that, we take our percentage, 0 0.8, and divide it by 100. This will give us 0 0.008. That is our value of R as a decimal rather than as a percentage. Looking at question A, it says make a recurrence relation to model this investment. And when we talk about a recurrence relation, we're talking about this formula over here. It's even telling us to use this formula. So we'll start by copying the formula down, Vn plus 1 equals Vn, and we're going to substitute a couple of values here. We know what R is. R is 0 0.008, and D is our repayment, 2,450. So we'll write that down as 1 plus 0 0.008 in brackets, plus D, which is $2,450. To simplify this even further, we can focus on the brackets. What's 1 plus 0 0.008? Well, that will give us 1.008. And then we just copy the rest down, like so. Now, this is the solution to question A. It asked for a recurrence relation to model this investment. And this is what we're looking for, basically the formula where R and D has been substituted in. We're going to use this formula in question B. It's asking us to calculate the balance of the savings account after one year. We need to remember that our repayments are done quarterly. How many quarters are in a year? There's four of them, so four quarters. Let's start with V0. How much money do we have in our investment account when zero quarters have passed. Well, when you read the question, it doesn't talk about an amount of money that we started with. It talks about our repayments and it talks about our interest rate. So I'm going to assume that we started with nothing. We started with zero dollars. Let's now move on to finding the one. We know when we look at our recurrence relation that if it's V1 on the left, it's got to be V0 on the right. This is because the subscript on the right has to be one less than the subscript on the left. Now we just copy down the numbers. Times 1.008 plus 2,450. This is a recurrence relation, which means that we take the previous value and substitute it in. So V1 is zero dollars times 1.008 plus 2,450. Zero times 1.008 is just going to be zero, and then we add the 2,450. So V1 is just going to equal 2,450 dollars. V1 being the value of our investment at the end of quarter one. Now, before I move on to V2, I'm noticing that I'm using up too much space, so I'm going to compress things a little. All right, so to find V2, I know that I'm going to put V1 to the right, 
because the subscript to the right is always one less than the subscript to the left. I then multiply V1 by 1.008 and add $2,450. So what is V1? Well, it is taken from the previous result. We found out V1 before was $2,450. When we substitute it in, V2 will equal 2,450 times 1.008 plus 2,450. Bringing up our calculator, let's see what we get. 2,450 times 1.008 plus 2,450, and it comes out to $4,919.60. Let's now find V3. I'm going to take a shortcut. Rather than writing V2 here, I know that V2 is $4,919.60. So I'm going to write the amount straight in. Then I'm going to times it by 1.008 and I'm going to add $2,450. Bringing up my calculator. I've already got the $4,919.60 in there. I times it by 1.008 and I add the $2,450 deposit. I end up with $7,408.96. Let's now move on to our fourth and final quarter. So V4 will equal, and we need to take the previous result of $7,408.96. We multiply this by 1.008 and add 2,450 times 1.008 plus $2,450 and we come up with $9,918.23. So after four quarters or one year, our account has accumulated to $9,918.23 in savings. Let's now move on to question C. It says, how much interest did Anne accrue over the one year period? So what we're going to do is we're going to imagine what would have happened if there was no interest. We know that she was depositing $2,450 each quarter and she did this for four quarters. $2,450 times four gives us $9,800. This is the amount her repayments would have accumulated to if she was not receiving interest, but she was receiving interest. And that is why she received more than that. She received the amount of $9,800. And eighteen dollars and twenty three cents. So this includes some interest. If we subtract the nine thousand eight hundred, which doesn't include interest, we will find out how much interest she received. Nine thousand nine hundred and eighteen dollars and twenty three cents minus nine thousand eight hundred equals one hundred and eighteen dollars twenty three. That's the amount of interest that she received out of this investment. Let's now move on to question D. It says, what is the balance of the savings account after three quarters? And that's a really easy one to answer. If we look back at the previous screen, V3 tells us the value of our account after three quarters, which is $7,408.96. That is our solution for part D. Anyway, that concludes example two. Remember to read the description below for links to workbooklets that relate to this video.